Hello, this is MD McCollum, and we're going to take a look at the new Sculptress Pro Edition to a ZBrush 2018. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've already loaded a Polymesh 3D Sphere, low poly 8192 polys, and we're going to use the uh, clay buildup brush. And this is without being in Sculptress mode. This is just the standard mode. So as we add here, you'll notice it's kind of rough. There's not much for it to work with. It basically has to work within that poly count. But once we turn on Sculptress, you'll notice the cursor changes color and we get a whole nother deal here. And you can see that very easily right here. With it off. with it on even going over the same mesh makes it a lot thicker now also your smoothing is dynamic and depends on basically the size you pick for your brush so I'm going to hold down and smooth here and you'll notice by looking at the wireframe how it's smoothing things out you can see that compared to up here but if I widen my brush and if I make it particularly wide then it's going to really lay into it. Triangulate the face as you can see. But it pretty much just wipes it out if you make it too big. So we come down here and we reduce the size and then we can get back to smoothing out whatever we were doing on our sculpt. If this built up too heavy, if when you came in to put something in and you put in way too much, well, all you got to do is make your brush a little bigger when you come in and smooth it out. So as you can see, this is quite a difference right here and quite a tool. I guess I really didn't know the sculptors people had it this well off. Because there'll be no more going back and forth between uh, dividing and stuff, depending on what you're doing. Now, if you're working in a pipeline, You've got to maintain a certain poly count, probably. But just for uh, concepting, uh, conceptualization of characters and just building things in general for most of us, this is going to be a, an added boon to productivity just because we don't have to divide and reconstruct and go back and forth between all those steps. I'm sure it's going to have its limitations, but it's been around a while, and to me, it's quite an improvement depending on what you're using it for. Now in morphing, you certainly couldn't use this because if you're building morphs, anybody that's built morphs know that it has to have the same poly count. So we started off with 8,192. Now we have 55,189. So not only did we lose our low poly nature, there's no way it's going to fit back into a morph of 8,192. And it's just, to me, it's also pretty powerful of how this eliminates things. You can eliminate uh, a lot of things that were problems in anatomy uh, just by simply doing this, going back, and basically starting over. It's almost like having an undo brush. Now, I am not a big fan of the triangulation of it because uh, I like to work with smoother topology. So, let's just see what happens when we come in here with Z-Remesher. I'm going to leave Adapt on and... Let's leave it the same, and let's see what happens when we remesh it. See if we can restore back. Well, it just restores a little of the order. Gives you a little bit of clean face. But if I had to have a negative about it, it would be that it triangulates it. But those of us that's been doing this for a while know that basically in most software, it's going to reduce down to triangles in the final result anyway, as far as how the software deals with surfaces in some cases. But this dynamic smoothing is uh, to me I'll, I'll put up with the with the retopology or remeshing uh, just to have this little tool this is the demo head and it is a level one version of it I've deleted the higher subdivision levels so it is uh, 3562 polys as far as the bust part of it and what I wanted to do here was show you the difference in smoothing 
Now what we'll first do is look at just what we had to do with standard smoothing if we wanted to like remove the ear. We could come in here with that and then we could come over, grab our flatten tool, flatten that out, smooth, and there were ways of doing it. But it was just, it's just a uh, whole lot easier with the sculptress mode, with the dynamic smoothing, because it just solves those problems for you and fills in what you need. And then, of course, you can come back and retopologize that. There's several methods for that, too. But, as you can see here, you can get some pretty strange results, too depending on what you want to do due to strength like I said due to size things like that so you have to be careful sometimes of what you're going to remove but for something like the ears it works great the mouth well it depends on if you want maybe a uh, maybe a, a more dead zombie look or something like that to the mouth but no it's, it's probably not ideal for that either but you can just come in here and continue to smooth this out to however you need it and then uh, change your size and come back in and smooth it back a little if you needed to reduce the poly count but you are going to have the triangulation in there unless you go back in and remesh and in most cases if I'm using the head as just a model then I will probably come in here with geometry once again and in this case I'll probably double leave adapt on and let Z remesher clean this up even though it's not perfect when you sometimes working in a pipeline you don't have time to sit there and just completely retopologize something if you're doing several things so something like Z remesher I know some people hate it but it works in my pipeline quite a bit because it just gives me a cleaner topology to work with now here we have the low poly version of the demo head again and I have deleted the upper subdivision levels and the reason is because Sculpt does not work with uh, multiple subdivision level models. So there, like I said, there are limitations, but there's also ways to deal with that. But what I've got going here is the Snake Hook 2 tool. And what we'll do first is look at how to use this tool without Sculptress on. And you can see here, there's just not enough polys to get anything done. So we turn on Sculptress, and now it's a whole nother story. Now you can still probably outstretch, like here, Sculptress's ability to keep up, but you just work that out. And to me, it leaves some pretty intriguing possibilities. But this also shows you what you can do without jumping back and forth between all those levels. And of course again you have the dynamic smoothing that you don't want to get too carried away with or things will disappear. And you end up with some very strange looking things. But you can see here just how easy it is to come in and pull out things and not have to fight anymore with it. Uh, not have to worry about your, your density and things like that. Well, that's it for this demo of the Sculptors Pro Edition to ZBrush 2018. I hope you've seen enough by now to see that uh, it makes conceptual work and just uh, sculpting a whole lot easier and a lot less back and forth than it was before. Anyway, thank you for watching.